all the lights were set up, ready to go, and in floats this very attractive, very vibrant young woman. She was extremely charismatic. She said, hi, I'm Jody." right from the get-go. It's been like weeks since I put makeup on. <laughs> I'm glad to see this is waterproof. I don't plan to cry, but you know, I probably won't. Hello everybody, welcome back, it's Naya Mystery and today I want to make a video showing you guys how to spot a sociopathic narcissist which in my opinion is the most dangerous narcissist of them all and today as an example we'll be using Ms. Jodie Arias who's a woman that needs no introduction if you haven't heard of her I'd advise you to do some research because her case is truly mind-boggling her behavior was very narcissistic leading up to the trial and I think she's the perfect example to showcase how to spot the sociopathic narcissist in your lives. Okay, so let's go. First sign of a sociopathic narcissist would be someone that's very calm under pressure. Someone in a very stressful situation that doesn't seem to be breaking a sweat, doesn't seem worried, doesn't seem to fear any sort of consequence to their actions. And Jodi showcases this perfectly when she's being interviewed for the alleged murder of her ex-boyfriend. She doesn't seem worried at all. She looks like she's auditioning for like a Mary Kate and Ashley movie or something. She strolls in smiling, does her makeup. Very strange, very strange. That sets alarm bells to me that maybe, you know, she doesn't have this fear of consequence of her actions, that her frontal lobes aren't developed, which is a sign of a psychopath. They don't have the same sort of reaction to fear that neurotypicals like me or you would have. So watch out for this when you're dealing with somebody that, you know, shows these kind of behaviors. It's a big red flag. She sat down with me. I was really surprised by how excited she was to be interviewed. That'd be great. Okay. Yay, no bottled water. Never put my makeup on in front of a total stranger, but that's okay. You're not that much of a stranger. The second sign, of course, is pathological lying. Sociopaths lie as much as they speak. They lie all the time. And Jody is notorious for her lies leading up to the trial. There's a lot of evidence that places me at Travis's house, and there is a reason for that. And that reason is that um, that I did see Travis the day that he passed away. A lot of things happened that day. Um, I almost lost my life as well. She was so willing to share this information that could be incredibly detrimental to her case. There was an argument among some people, um, two individuals, that uh, one wanted to take my life she told me that the intruder actually put a gun to her head and pulled the trigger. The guy with the gun was standing near me and I just remember holding my head and closing my eyes. He pulled the trigger and nothing happened, just a click. Subsequently, we found out that in her interrogation with Detective Esteban Flores of the Mesa PD, that the intruder who held the gun to her head took her information and let her go. He grabbed my wallet and he was looking through it. What's interesting is that Jody never told Detective Flores that the intruder tried to kill her. He said, you need to leave. And don't you call anybody. And don't you say anything. And don't you act like anything happened. Completely different account of what actually happened. So it hit me that if she could so effortlessly make up this lie in front of me, what else is she capable of? The last sign that you have to know about is narcissism to the millionth degree. You know, I have to admit everyone is a bit narcissistic, but someone who's dangerously narcissistic is someone who shows narcissism to a very extreme degree and doesn't feel empathy for other people. Nobody can get in the way of what they want and Jodi shows this so much. Jodi was really concerned about her image right from the get-go. It's been like weeks since I put makeup on. I'm glad to see this is waterproof. I don't plan to cry, but you know, I probably won't. Why do you need to be? Travis Houston, I used to argue about my driving because my rear view mirror was always facing me instead of toward the back. He made me feel vain sometimes. Yeah. 